This special is going to be like one of the uh, vlogs of old where I would take a particular topic or theme and revolve the vlog around it. They're much older vlogs on the channel. I had changed it up years ago to be more monthly based and when Riley moved in with me over two years ago, we revamped the vlogs to be more about what's happening in our lives based on you know, the month. So this is more of a special than an actual vlog, but I guess you could consider it a vlog of sorts. But we will have the June 2023 vlog at the end of the month. And one of the big things that's happened to me personally is what I'm gonna cover in this video, which I will most likely only mention in passing by the end of the month. Maybe it'll be like a, a quick update about how I'm doing emotionally. Of course, I'll probably update people on my live streams over on the gaming channel. But it's been a very tough day for me. As some of you may know already, I lost my 16 year old cat, Jadis. She basically passed away from old age. And it, it's taken a toll on me because of how much that cat meant to me. And if you're a fellow pet parent like me and you've had a cat, a dog, or another animal that you've loved and lost, you probably feel how I feel. It's not the first time that I've, I've lost a pet. It's unfortunately not going to be the last time. The good news is I still have my younger cat, uh, Ninja. I didn't name him Ninja. I'm not a fan of the, the Twitch streamer. That just happened to be his name by the, the foster parent. Most of the time we would just call him Turtling because sometimes he would act like a turtling to Jadis. But overall, he's a good cat, too. So he's going through some emotional changes because when I adopted him, it was a month after my previous cat, Bandit, passed away back in 2012 of advanced uh, kitty failure. And he was only 12 years old at the time. So he has been used to having other cats in his life, from his siblings to Jadis. Basically, Jadis was like a, a mother figure to a turtling. And now Turtling is alone, well, except for me and Riley. So before we start talking about, I guess, the history of Jadis and what she means to me, obviously a lot, I just want to thank you all for leaving those comments in Discord, uh, the YouTube community page, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Thank you all so much for your kind words. It really does mean a lot to me through this difficult time. And it does mean a lot to me that Riley was there with me. You know, we went to the vet together and she was there by my side till, till the end. But I, I guess the best place to start is the beginning. I guess the life of Jadis, my cat, my, my poofy little cat. I think she was half tabby or half ragdoll or half Maine Coon. But she originally wasn't my cat. So one of my sisters took a year off from uh, school after she graduated from high school. And she decided to move in with me for about a year back in Shreveport at the old house. This was 2007. So I've, I've been living in that house for maybe a year. So it was still relatively new to me. And my sister moving in with me was, was a boon. Actually, it wasn't a year because... It had only been like a, a few months because we, we bought the house. I bought the house in late 2006 and my dad and I had been demoing it and he's been, he was like refurbishing it, rebuilding it till about the, the spring of 2007 when I officially moved in. So sorry, I had to backtrack there. But shortly after I moved in about a month, so it was technically very much new to me, my new house. Uh, my second youngest sister moved in with me for about a year in order to get back into school. And at the time, I had Bandit. I mentioned Bandit. He, he was my older, uh, short hair black cat. And I loved that cat. And actually, he was a gift from my sisters back in 2000. And they asked me if I, I wanted a cat. And at the time, I didn't have a cat. I'm like, sure, I want a cat, only if it's a black cat. And they're like, well, we happen to have a black cat. I'm like, well, only if it's a male black cat. Well, and the rest was history. And, and that cat went with me on several journeys throughout my uh, short-lived radio career from, what, 2000 to 2006. But he was a great cat, too. 
at the time, he was the only cat I had. I mean, I had a few dogs here and there, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't exactly do so well with dogs because dogs require a lot more attention. And I'm fortunate that I do have a really good rescue dog that my dad gave me back in 2012 as well. So I got both Ninja and Edward in 2012. I got uh, Edward about 10 years ago around the summertime when he was just a little puppy. My dad found him on the property back in East Texas. And he was a good boy. And he still is a good dog. And I'm lucky to have him. I'm lucky to still have Turtling. And I'm lucky to have Riley. So back then in 2007, I was much younger and dumber. <laughs> and my second youngest sister was begging me to get her a cat, even though I already had a cat. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking if I agree to adopt a cat for her whenever she moves, because the plan wasn't for her to stay with me forever. It was just to get her back on her feet, you know, and eventually she did get back on her feet. She Put about a year in college, and then she she transferred to another college in Texas, and then she uh, ended up with her uh, one of her good friends in high school, and him and her ended up falling in love and getting married, and the the rest is history. Fortunately for both of them, and I'm very lucky that I I have them both in my life now. That I live in Central Texas in Hill Country along with Riley, so I got them, and I have my my youngest sister, and I have her husband, and and. Uh, her sons, my nephews. So I, I technically have three sisters. But yeah, she finally talked me into getting her a cat. So we went to the animal shelter. I think it was around April, May 2007. And uh, she picked out this little white poof ball. Blue eyes. And she still had those blue eyes. For 16 years, you know, some cats will change the color of their eyes from like blue to green or to gold. Jada's kept her blue eyes throughout her life. And I could tell there was something very special about this little poof ball. And, and Bandit, my oldest cat, I think he basically took her on as like a daughter. He kind of fell in love with her. And it was hard not to. She just had this personality. She was just so cute. And the first week she would sneeze. And... We actually thought that she was sick and that there was something wrong with her, but you know, it turns out she was just sneezing. At the time, Carly was obviously going back to school, but she was also going back to East Texas because I lived in Northwest Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, the Arclotex region, but Carly obviously had family and friends back in, in East Texas, so she frequently would take trips back into East Texas. And so what happened was, I guess Jadis and I ended up bonding along with uh, Bandit and Jadis. And the deal was sealed one morning when I woke up and laying on top of my comforter, right on top of me, was this little white poof paw. <laughs> she was just looking at me. And I was like, hello. And I knew right there that Jadis had picked her pet parent. And then she peed on me. Oh, and you're probably wondering where the name Jadis came from. So with Ninja, I didn't pick out the name Ninja, as I pointed out. Bandit, yeah, I picked out his name. I actually picked out Jadis' name from uh, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, <laughs> like the main villain, right? Because at the time, Jadis was was like all almost all white. Not completely, but almost all white. And so uh, my youngest sister almost mentioned her name. I mean, I guess she wouldn't care if I mentioned her actual name, but I, I guess I try to give her some privacy, but... Like she and I were trying to brainstorm a name for the for this little kitten, and I guess at the time I was working on a uh, a report for my English class in college. Yes, I was in college too at the time. I had gone to college a little bit, and then I uh, kind of put my college on hold while I was in radio. And after radio, I, I got back in college, so I could at least get something out of it for all the the hours and the credits I earned. So I, I went back to college as well. And I think I was taking an English class at the time. And I think the book report I was writing was for uh, one of the you know, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe uh, books. But the, the main antagonist of the first book was Jadis. You know, she was the White Queen. And once I mentioned it, my sister's like, wow, that's a great name. Jadis is a beautiful name. Even though it was tied to a, a villain from you know, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. So yeah, that's how Jadis got her name, and you know, eventually my sister moved out 
went back to East Texas, and the rest is history. And she eventually relocated down here to Central Texas, Hill Country, with her husband. And then eventually my other sister and her husband relocated to Hill Country as well after dental school. And, and now I'm here, too. So all three of us are here, and along with the brother-in-laws and my fiancé, Riley, and then the nephews. So, yeah, we're all here now in Hill Country. But Jada spent the next 16 years of her life with me and, and me with her. And, you know, there were good days and bad days, just like with any any pet, any pet parent, especially with cats. But she was so warm, so friendly. And she'd be friendly to complete strangers. Like a, a stranger would walk in and Jada would be right there to greet them. I guess reminding them that, hey, this is my house, but you're welcome here. Be ni- Be nice to me. Uh, be nice to my pet parent, <laughs> but she was so friendly and and she charmed so many people that you know got a chance to to meet her and spend any time with her. And when sadly a uh, bandit passed away in uh, 2012, once again of advanced uh, kidney failure, it it broke me. And at the time, I I still had Edward. He was a, still a puppy, so at least I had him, and at least I had Jadis to fall back on. I think I went through like a pretty bad breakup earlier in that summer. It, you know, worked out because I'm I'm with somebody very special. So, yeah, it all worked out in the end. But it was a long, amazing journey, Jadis and me. I mean, whereas Bandit Cat only lasted sadly twelve years, Jadis lived to be sixteen. And I'm grateful for every single year, every single month, and and day, and you know, minute and second that I had with her. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. And and I'm, I'm glad Carly talked me into, I mean, my sister, there, I, I told you all her name. Oops. I, I'm glad she told me to uh, adopt that cat. Well, for her. But then eventually, Jadis became my cat. But, you know, now she's gone. But the memories of Jadis will remain. And I'm going to cherish those memories for as long as I can. And she really did touch my life. And she became, I'm not even joking. I'm not even exaggerating. She became like a daughter to me. She had quite the spirit to her. Even till the end, she had this this spirit. So she started showing signs of, of health issues. I would say maybe, I don't know if it was 22 or early 2023 when we were still living in Shreveport, Riley and me. And we were making preparations to relocate to Central Texas. I just... Uh, purchased this house and I was waiting a few months for the previous owners to move out because they were going through a divorce. So I, I gave the, the the mom and the ex-wife and her boys a chance to to find a new place to live. And Jadis was starting to have some issues, which seems small at first, but warning signs. I mean, she was already 15, approaching 16. And she was having trouble, like, with her bowel movements. Like, I'd, I'd find uh, cat poop around the house. And it was right then I started realizing, oh, this is not good. She's getting older. She's having trouble making it across the house to the bathroom. And she did throw up a lot. So, I mean, she, I, I had a feeling that there was something wrong. And the vet, the vet in Shreveport said that they thought she had a heart murmur and maybe some early kidney issues. So they, they put her on like some like can prescription canned cat food for like a month. And even though I, I'd had her eating canned cat food for years, because a few years back she stopped eating the the dry stuff. And I switched to canned cat food because that was the only thing I could think of to help get her appetite back up. And fortunately she, she gorged on the canned cat food and that saved her. Because I, I may have lost her years earlier if I hadn't made that decision. Because I looked into it. I'm like, well, why is my cat no longer eating dry cat food? And some people say, well, your cat's getting older. And, you know, maybe you ought to consider switching to canned stuff like the pate. So I did that. And I experimented. You know, I, I tried different types. I, I learned that she doesn't like fish. And she tolerated chicken. But she loved beef. Beef is probably her favorite. Well, was her favorite. I mean, poultry, she was okay with poultry, like turkey and chicken. I, I think I even got her, like, some like wild rabbit and venison sometimes. But she loved eating beef. Like canned pate beef was like her favorite. 
She definitely liked the beef. She did not like fish at all. She hated she hated seafood. So I learned that about her. But yeah, I took her to the vet and I got that month's worth of prescription canned cat food that she hated. And she, she would still eat enough, but it was obvious she didn't like it. And I guess it just wasn't enough to save her. But, you know, then we eventually like moved. I think it was like March that happened. And then early May, we moved down here to Texas. And so I, I noticed that over the past couple months that Jadis had started losing weight. So not only was she having bathroom issues and she did throw up a bit here and there. Well, OK, a lot more, but she seemed to cut back on throwing up whenever she finally when we got her down here. Her and Ban I mean, her and Ninja and Edward. So I got all three pets down here in multiple trips. I I've talked about that. I think I talked about it in the uh, May 2023 vlog. If you're interested about the whole like moving saga. But I, I found a new vet to go to about um, three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Yeah, time flies. And uh, he noticed that she had lost weight because he, he called up the vet's office in Shreveport and he looked at the numbers when she was weighed in Shreveport compared to how much she weighed like on her first trip. And he's like, yeah, she's lost weight. Like the only thing we can really do to help her get her like uh, appetite back up is, is like give her the shot, you know, the booster appetite, but it, it could be a negative for her immunity. So it was a gamble. And the hope was it was going to boost her, uh, appetite back up and I thought it did at first but turns out she had actually lost an additional pound the, the second time I took her to the doctor like a week ago so that was very very concerning and I think it was a week ago that things started to really go downhill for Jadis this past week like she was struggling to walk more she was going slower she was stumbling it was heartbreaking to see her you know, trying to walk. And like I said, she had the spirit to her and she tried her best with, with her deteriorating body to keep going. But unfortunately her body just started falling apart. And oh yeah, the, the vet did do a blood test. The first uh, trip I, I took to, took her to the new vet and there's some, there was some sort of issue in her blood. So there, there must be some, there's some sort of cancer or, or something affecting her that was causing this. Now we, we could have taken more, more blood work, but the best bet was either a get her appetite back up, get her to regain weight or else. Well, well, we all know what happened, right? But it was sad because she weighed about average. She never got overweight. I mean, a lot of people thought she was bigger than she was because she was a poof ball. She was a long hair. You know, the princess poof ball, the monkey, as I like to call her. I loved that cat. But she actually was pretty average for her weight. She never really gained weight. She didn't get overweight. Unlike Turdling and, of course, Bandit before him. Hopefully, uh, Turdling will lose some weight now that he can't still can't cat food anymore because he would gorge himself on her cat food whenever she wasn't around or I wasn't looking, even though he's supposed to eat dry food. Well, now he has no choice. But she had gotten a point now over the past two, three weeks where she was feeling a lot more bony, like her back was feeling bony, her sides were feeling bony, her face had starting to sink in. And I, I knew, I think Monday, Monday I, I knew that her time was, was coming up, you know, and I, I hated to have that feeling because I really in the back of my head was thinking, come on, come on, turn around. Just keep eating, you know, keep eating, keep drinking water. You'll gain the weight back. You'll get healthy again. We can get a few more years out of you, but it wasn't meant to be. It just wasn't. But I tried my best, you know, and it always feels like you didn't do enough, you know, that if you only you could have done a little bit more. But in the end, the, the last few nights, it just it got to the point where she was just she would move a little bit, then lay down a lot. And then she'd move a little bit more and then lay down. And I spent the past few evenings and, and days when I had a chance to sit beside her and just pet her and talk to her. So at least I got to talk to her a little bit. And 
I could tell that she was sad. I don't, I don't know if she fully understood what was happening to her, but she was still trying so hard. And I even would bring the food bowl to her, you know, and bring water to her because she, she was having trouble getting to it. And I made the decision, like, uh, I think Tuesday, to go ahead and tell the vet that it was time time for the only option we had left, the humane option, to put her down. Even though I really, really wanted for her to live longer, and at the very least, if she was to pass on, I, I wanted her to, to go in her sleep, you know, and I think that's what most pet parents would prefer is that they, they get up one morning and their pet, who's had a good long life, has just died in their sleep. At least that way you, you can take solace in the fact that, you know, they died when they were meant to die and they crossed the rainbow bridge when it was their time to go. But after much debate and talking about it with Riley after we came back with, from an appointment that she had to go to, you know, I, I basically just, even though I, I was just, I was, I wasn't really venting, but I was pretty emotional in the truck on the way back, you know, talking about how I, I know what I have to do. You know, I was a volunteer in animal rescue for a couple of years, I was one of the founders of a, of a cat rescue group in Shreveport. And there were cats that we couldn't save, you know, and it, it sucked, you know, taking a cat to the vet to get looked at. And the vet tells us, oh, this cat can't be, this cat can't be saved. We have to put it down. And we're just sitting there going like, we were trying to save this cat. We, we rescued this cat. But unfortunately, you know, it, sometimes, you know, it was too late. And that's a hard thing for vets and technicians and, the, and anyone that works at a vet's office. And I, I could tell that they, the technician and the, the vet, they're both pretty emotional. Even if they're seasoned veterans, I think that, most of the time, that's like the worst job for a vet or anyone working at a veterinarian office is when they have to put down an animal. I, I guess the best case scenario is when that animal has lived a long life and is simply dying of old age like Jadis was. But still, you know, they, they get into it because of their, their love for animals, you know, and obviously to have a career and make money. But there has to be that passion there because I think it's very hard to become a veterinarian. It's like even harder to be a veterinarian than like like a run-of-the-mill average doctor. So I, I can imagine the toll it takes on them. And I even talked to them about it. And other vets and technicians have talked to me about it over the years about how they, just, they really don't like this part of the job, but they know they have to do it because it's the only humane option that's left. And my, my hopes of her simply just passing away in her sleep weren't meant to be because she just had that spirit. She did not want to, she just kept fighting till the end. I mean, even like throughout Wednesday, you know, when we, when the appointment was coming up, you know, you know, I was trying to get her some water and, you know, she would try and lift her head up into the bowl, but she'd fall back, you know, but she, she kept trying, even though it was obvious she was running out of time and it, it sucked, you know, it really did. But, I guess it gave me some comfort in knowing that I was doing the right thing. And what is the right thing? Well, the right thing isn't always the easy thing. A lot of times it's the hardest thing you can do, but it's still the right thing. You know, and I've, I've put down pets previously, like I had to put down Bandit. I regret not being there for him at the very end because I, I really feel like I should have, even though I was in like an emotional state. Whenever I lost him, I, I should have been there for him at the end. But at least I can say I kind of redeemed myself with Jadis because I was there with her at the end. And uh, credit to Riley, she was there too. And, you know, she wasn't the biggest cat fan. And she and Jadis didn't exactly get along most of the time. But by the end, I think Riley had at least grown to, to appreciate what Jadis meant to me. And I think to see Jadis go from that, that poofball princess who thought she was the center of the universe two years ago when Riley moved in to, to the old lady who was near the end 
of, of this journey and seeing the state that Jadis was in, I think in the end, even Riley was won over by Jadis because when, when the deed was done by the vet, I was there by Jadis' side, petting her till the very end. And Riley, Riley and I both broke down. And I'll be honest, I didn't expect Riley to break down. I did not. I mean, I, I thought that, you know, she'd be sad for me and she'd be there to comfort me. But she broke down too over it. So obviously, over the past two years, you know, she had grown some sort of attachment to Jadis, even if, you know, she wasn't the biggest fan of cats or the, the mess they made from from the hair and, and throwing up and et cetera. But in the end, I think that Jadis left a positive impression on Riley, just like, well, a much larger positive impression on me over the past 16 years. And I'm extremely grateful for those past 16 years. And, you know, it's been an honor to have had that cat in my life and for her to share her life with me. And I sincerely hope that not only do we have a soul and that we have something waiting for us on the other side, that there's more to life than flesh and bone. I know I've mentioned that in the past vlogs, going old school here. I try to be really spiritual about my beliefs. I mean, I'm not religious, but I do believe in something. I'm not, I guess you could say I'm agnostic, reincarnation, that sort of thing. I don't claim to have all the answers either. But I, I do believe that, that there's more to us than meets the eye. I believe that we all do have a soul and that there is an afterlife and maybe there are different planes of existence and maybe there are good places, maybe there's bad places. Maybe maybe people can reincarnate like the Hindus believe into different animals. You know, Maybe everything that exists has a spirit. Maybe some are further along the path of the spiritual journey than others. Like in grade school, you know, you got uh, those that are just starting off that are, you know, kindergartners. And then you have those that are in high school and then those off in uh, college, et cetera. But I, I feel like Jadis had a spirit to her. When I looked into her eyes and I, I felt her emotions over the past 16 years, I felt like there was, there was something there. And I feel like most owners feel the same way about their cats and dogs, etc. I don't know if it's just us imprinting ourselves on these animals or, or them imprinting themselves on us. But, I mean, you'll you look at animals in the wild, because I was talking to Riley about this when we were on the balcony earlier. I mean, a lot of animals have emotion. They, maybe not to the same level that we do, or maybe some have it, have it at a deeper level than we can even possibly understand. Like, dogs... You know, they, they bond with each other. They have relations with each other emotionally. And so do cats and so do wolves and foxes and, and birds. You also have uh, elephants. You know, elephants, they even mourn their dead. I mean, you look at uh, different primates, uh, monkeys, apes. They, they clearly have emotional structures or, or packs of lions, you know, prides of lions. You know, they have emotion. And they have different rules that they live by and abide by. But then you look out at whales and dolphins and killer whales. You know, just to name a few. And you look at uh, crows. Crows are and ravens are obviously extremely intelligent birds. And they're very, very intelligent birds out there. So, I don't know. I, I'd like to believe that we're all part of something greater. And that doesn't just include humans. It, includes all pets, all animals. But then some of you are like, well, well, then how, how do you accept eating other animals? Because, well, I'm an omnivore. <laughs> I was born an omnivore, which eats meat. Therefore, it's, it's the food chain. Okay, so lions can have emotions. They can be part of a pride, but they're still going to go hunt antelope. It, it, are wolves going to hunt uh, elk? It's just the way it is, you know? It's just reality. It's it's the circle of life, like in Lion King. So, I mean, come on. Like, you look at uh, Mufasa and and Simba and, and the rest of the pride. I mean, unfortunately, some of those animals in, in, in their kingdom were on the menu. It's just a 
reality. They, they weren't vegetarians or vegans, and neither am I. I mean, I do eat some vegetables and fruits, but I also eat meat. You know, it's just the way it is. But anyways, yeah, I'm really going to miss Jadis. She meant a lot to me over the past 16 years. She really did. And I'm extremely grateful for, for the time that I had with her. And for everyone's lives that was touched by her. And I'm also glad about one more thing before I wrap up. I was hoping that Jadis would, would live much longer, but I was also hoping at the very least Jadis would, would make the trip down here because I was already worried about, you know, her health back in Shreveport before the move because she was you know showing early signs of, of concern. But what I really wanted was for her and my sister to be reunited, you know. I really wanted that. I really wanted my sister to be able to spend a little bit of time with Jadis. And fortunately, my sister was able to reunite with her. And, and here's the thing. It comes off the heel of her losing one of her dogs. Uh, she and her husband used to have uh, a twin Australian Shepherd mixes. They were, they were sisters. And they lost one of them years ago. But then they had the other one for the longest time. And they loved that dog. They took that dog everywhere. Them, But she started having serious health issues too. And a few months ago, unfortunately, my sister and her husband had to make the painful decision to, to put that dog down. So it really did come full circle that my sister got to be reunited with with her cat, <laughs> which became my cat. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. And, and so is my sister as well. That she's happy that she at least got to spend a little bit of time with Jadis before Jadis' health really went downhill. But And the fact that Jadis did accidentally fall from the second floor down to the floor, first floor, I think we mentioned that a while back. I, I mean, the doctor said that he didn't detect any like physical harm to her when, when she did that because she was supposed to stay upstairs, but we had a cat gate. Yeah, she just... Tried, I think she tried to get around the cat gate and then she failed. That's, but he said there was nothing physically wrong with her when he when he examined her. This is like the around the first appointment because I did mention that to him, and I think we mentioned it in a vlog. Of course, I was worried then. I was worried when when I saw this, when I saw her falling, you know, around off the stairwell onto the first floor, like like by the kitchen. I was I was thinking that she was either going to be dead or seriously injured, but she didn't seem seriously injured or dead at the time. She seemed fine, just had some adrenaline issues. So maybe it was the shock of, of falling that far. I mean, if she was a younger cat, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. But once again, she was 16 years old when that happened. The doctor said she was okay. I mean, she was already losing weight. She was already having health issues. So I don't know if that really accelerated anything. I mean, the truth is, I feel like she was going to do, do something like that anyways, no matter how hard I tried to stop her. Because I, I could have put her back in the cat room. I could have closed the door for her and turtling. But I thought simply like telling her no and shooing her back in the cat room would be enough. But, you know, what they say about curiosity and cats, right? Anyways. Yeah, cats. I, I guess she spends her other, I mean, maybe, maybe that was like her eighth life that she used on that fall and then the other seven here and there over the past 16 years. But I guess she, she used them wisely because she got to live to be 16 years of age and she will be missed. And there's going to be part of me that will never forget her. In fact, when I was uh, in animal rescue, we uh, did some sort of charity thing. I think it was with painting of a twist. And what they did was they, they would take uh, photos we'd send them of our pets and they would like they would like uh, trace the photo and then we would come in and we would we would paint the photo and the money raised for this went towards the uh, fundraiser of uh, the charity group I was part of back in the day back what about a decade ago and so I did I did paint uh, Jadis and I may put that on the back wall in the office I used to have that in the old guest room back in Shreveport, but I brought it with me. And so I'm thinking about hanging it behind me. Oh, yeah, and I'm also getting her uh, ashes. I'm getting it in a box with her name on it. I didn't do that for Bandit, but my friend had a dog named Dexter. 
And he was a really good dog. In fact, Jadis and him were kind of like friends whenever my friend lived with me for like a year. They became buddies. With a pit bull and a poof ball. Talk about odd couple, right? But when my friend's dog, Dexter, died, I think he did the same thing. I think he had the ashes cremated and put in a box of it with the dog's name on it. And that's the same thing I'm doing for Jadis. At first, I wasn't going to do that because I didn't do that for Bandit. And I do believe when we when we die, it's it's a vessel, right? It's just a, a vehicle that we we use, and that what really matters is the memories of the person or the, the the animal, the pet, and their soul, their spirit. That's what really matters. But I guess I just, in the heat of the moment, at the vet's office, I decided, you know what? I'm just I'll I'll take the ashes and I'll just have them in a box with her name on it. And so that's pretty much it. The end of a 16-year journey of Jadis, my poof ball. And, uh, yeah. It starts off, you know, happy, you know. And it always ends sad. But I do believe that, at the very least, part of her will always be with me. Even if it breaks my heart that she's gone now. I, I hope that she's reunited with Bandit and Dexter and... Hopefully I see her again in the next life. I would very much would like to. Along with other pets that I've lost along the way. Because I've, I've lost a few pets. Just like most of you have. If you've had pets and you live long enough, you'll lose pets. It's just a sad reality. And of course, people that we love that are now long gone. You hope to see them again. At least we hope that's the case, right? But I guess the, the moral of the story here is to... I guess cherish those that matter in your life, whether they're people or pets and be grateful for the time that you do get with your pet. I was lucky to get 16 years with Jadis. I, I wish I would have gotten 17 or 18, but we got the amount of time together that we were meant to get. And we did. And there's a, there's a meme like, the death meme, and I don't know why every time I, I, I think of the meme and I think about making a, a version of the meme to include Jadis, I get a little emotional because I guess it means something to me. Like maybe I'll make one or maybe I won't, but you know that meme where, you know, death says it's time to go and then it would be like Jadis, like, was I a good cat? And then death says, no, you were the greatest cat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I guess it just hits. It just hits really hard. I guess you was the greatest cat to me. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that's how you know you love them, right? Now they meant something to you because when they're gone, it feels like a part of you is dead or ripped off. But once again, I do appreciate all of you that uh, showed your support through the various social medias, uh, reaching out via DMs, uh, Discord, Twitter, Facebook, uh, the YouTube community page. I read all your comments and I, I appreciate every single one. And I know a lot of you have gone through you know similar situations where you've had a pet, a cat, a dog, etc. that you loved and you were a pet parent too. And ultimately the day came when you had to let them go as well. You had no choice but to go down the humane path in order to end their, their struggling and suffering. So I know a lot of you feel what I feel right now. And I'm also grateful for what I still have. Not just you all, my viewers, subscribers, fans, friends, mods, heroes, members. My, you know, my friends especially. And my family. Like my sisters, my brother-in-laws, my nephews. And my remaining pets. Because you, when you lose something whether it's a person or a pet, it's good to mourn. It's good to grief because that tells you you actually gave a damn about them, that they actually had an emotional impact on you. But it's also important to remind yourself what you still have. What do I still have? Well, I still have that family I mentioned. I still have my sisters and my brother-in-laws and my nephews. I still have my other cat, Turdling. He's 10 years old, a little overweight. Hopefully, he'll start to lose weight and, and I can keep him around for at least 16 years. At least I hope that's the case. So I still have him. I still have Edward, my, my mutt, my hound dog. 
one of the gifts that I still have from my father, you know, because my father passed away in 2016. But my dad gave him, gave him to me as a rescue dog. And at that point, I'd given up on being a dog owner because I didn't think I was a good enough dog owner because a, a few ran away, you know. And Edward has been so loyal. You know, he's a walking tree hound mix, but he's so friggin' loyal. I don't give him enough attention. He deserves way more attention from me. But he's been so loyal. I mean, he could be a peanut brain sometimes, but he's loyal. And he's, he's affectionate. And, you know, that, that dog means a lot to me too, you know. Plus, like I said, he was, he was a gift from my dad who rescued that dog. And I still have the dog, but coming up on it, I think 11 years. Yeah, it will be 11 years. So yeah, it was 2012, 20. Yeah, I think it was July 2012. And I think, yeah, July 2013, it'll be like 11 years. So Edward's like 11 years old now. And then Turtling will be 11, I think, in uh, August or September, somewhere in that ballpark. So I still have both of them to hold on to for as long as they're still meant to be around. So I just got to cherish them and take care of them and, and honor Jadis' memory. And I also have Riley. And even if my heart is breaking from the loss of Jadis, it's not shattered. It remains because... I have somebody special in my life who I love and who loves me. And it's important to, to have somebody like that. And I know a lot of people out there, they don't have somebody like that. And, you know, I was at the point where I was about ready to accept that I wasn't going to ever find somebody. You know, I lost my mom when I was very young. So I always had that, that void in my life, that sense of wanting somebody of to be loved and, loved by somebody and you know I've had a few girlfriends a few boyfriends a lot of flings and you know there were a few girlfriends that had potential being more but it didn't work out but with Riley it it it's very special you know, we started off as just friends. You know, she started off as one of my subscribers and viewers and I had a policy even back then you know where I was just going to try and be professional. And no, Pat, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> but anyways, uh, happy birthday to the professional. But I was not going to be a groomer like some of these streamers end up being, right? And I was just going to be friendly and professional. At the most, friends with my viewers and subscribers. I wasn't going to try to get involved with any of my subscribers. And Riley became a friend, you know, and she became a content creator. And and like some of the other content creators I've done stuff with, like UG Outlaw, Kane, Red, etc., you know, we became friends. And I think somewhere along the way, I think around 2020, around the, the, the pandemic, like she was going through some things, I was going through some things, and I think that we spent a lot of time talking to each other at night because she would stay up late and I would stay up late. And... I guess we started becoming more emotionally attached to each other, even though she was in Puerto Rico and I was in the States. So it went from being friends to more to us kind of seeing each other in a, I guess you could say a long distance relationship. So that lasted like a year. And then finally in 2021, you know, I, I put up the money to, to let her fly over here for a few weeks to go to the 2021 air show and spend some time with me. And it didn't take long for, the love that we had built the, on the foundation of friendship, which I think is very important to any relationship is friendship, you know, communication, common interests. You're not going to agree with them on everything. And they're going to be, they're far from perfect. Just like you're far from perfect, but hopefully you'll find the right person for you. Like I have with Riley and you know, the, there's definitely some differences she and I have, but we also have a lot of things in common and she means a lot to me. And I'm extremely grateful that she's with me on this journey going forward. And I'm, I'm lucky that I was able to meet her along with all my friends. And I'm lucky that I had Jadis in my life for the past 16 years. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's really about honoring the memories of those we lose and celebrating their life. And learning to move forward and appreciate the life we do have because, you know, we're, we'll be lucky if we live to be an old age, right? Especially with the way the world is, you know, with the economic situations and potential recession, depression looming and 
global war, famine, you know, worst case scenario, hopefully doesn't come to that. But the best thing you can hope for is to live a long life. And I, I hope I make it to that point, but I'm also grateful that I've made it this far. I've lived longer than my mom. My mom died when she was 25, you know, liver failure. And I've had friends that were taken way too young. I had a friend that was killed, I think, when he was, I think it was, what, 14, I think, at the time. And it was a tragic, uh, like, accident. It was a traffic accident. And then I had another really good friend who was like an older brother to me. He died, I think, he was 29 or 30. And I was I was still a kid back then. He was older than me, and he was like a brother. And, and so was his uh, brother and his sister. They meant a lot to me, and they still do. So you never know when your time's coming up. And like my dad, you know, he, he died in his 60s. And my granny, she, she died in her late 70s. My grandfather fortunately remarried, and he's still around, I think, 20 years later. And, you know, he has health issues now because he's in his upper 90s, but he's got to live a full, long life. So he was lucky that he's able to do that. But you just got to make the most out of the life you have and make smart decisions and learn from your mistakes and, you know, just cherish your life and cherish the lives of those that matter to you, whether it's a pet or a partner or family or friends. And even if the day comes where they, they pass on to the next life and hopefully there is something on the other side, part of them will always be with you. And the same is true for Jadis. There's always going to be a part of her as long as I remember her. That will always be with me. And I, I sincerely hope that when my time comes, um, like I said, hopefully it's a few decades from now. I would like to at least go on another 40 years, maybe 50, <laughs> maybe 100. I don't know. Who knows what life expectancy is going to be then or advancements in health and science or whatever by then. But as long as I'm still functional for the most part, I would like to keep going. I don't want to end up in a situation where I can no longer properly function, you know, that at that point, you know, I'd, I'd rather feel like it's my time as well. But till then, you know, just cherish the lives we have, be grateful for everyone that's touched our lives, our friends, our family, our loved ones, and our pets. And Jadis most definitely touched my life over the past 16 years. And I will continue to honor her memory. And as long as I remember her, part of her lives on. And when my time comes, I hope that not only am I reunited with my mom and my dad and grandparents and friends and others that have passed on before me or will pass on before me, I also hope I get reunited with my pets if that's in the cards. And I most definitely would love to hold my monkey again in the next life. The many miles we walk The many things we learn The building of a shrine Only just to burn That's the way it is That's the way it is That's the way it is. 
that's the way 